In the last video, we went over how we can enable collisions inside of the bullet solver. But that only works if you are using forces to act upon your geometry. If you want to use animation, you have to go about things a little bit differently. So let's go over how we can do that. Let's go ahead and set up our scene, drop in geometry node as well as a cube and then a match size. We'll hold shift and enter to wire that up and set it visible. Set the justify Y to min as well as setting our size, something a little bit bigger to two and make it a polygon mesh. We'll also drop in an RBD material fracture and we will wire that up so that it will fracture our geometry. I'm also going to drop in the RBD bullet solver and we'll wire that up as well. So now let's go ahead and enable our ground plane and then let's also go into our material fracture, go to constraints and set this a little bit lower so that we can have the cube go ahead and stick together but it's not going to be so stuck together that when something hits it it's just going to fall over and it's not going to break apart so now we need some geometry to collide with this so let's drop in a sphere as well as a transform node and let's go ahead and set that visible and we'll set the wireframe to the match size so that we can see what's going on there Gonna drop this to something like a 0.3 for the size. And let's actually go set this to a polygon mesh up to subdivisions a bit. So now let's go ahead and drag this up and out of the way. So it's kind of off to the side of our cube. And let's go ahead and animate this. So the way we do that is we go ahead, click this translate while holding down alt. And we'll go forward to about 90 frames ish. And we'll go over here and do the same thing. And now if I go ahead and click play here, you're gonna see that it's gonna play. It's playing super fast. If you wanna slow that down, have it be more like real time, click this little stopwatch right there and it'll play in real time. So that's fine and dandy, but we need this to actually be inside of our solver. So let's go ahead, drop in that RBD configure and we'll wire that up and set that into the collision geometry. So we can set this to active. And as I click play here, once I have the solver set as visible, you'll see it's in our simulation. And when we click play, it just falls straight to the ground. Now that's what we did in the, in the last video, but we need to have the animation actually play. So there's an option here that says animated. Now we can just enable that and this will work, right? Not exactly. So maybe we need this deforming too. You'll see why I say that here in a second. And we click play. Nope, nothing going on there. Maybe we deactivate the animated. Uh, again, that's not what we're looking for. So we'll go ahead and just deactivate that again. So we actually don't even need this RBD configure. We'll just wire this straight into the collision geometry. And we'll go back to the bullet solver and we'll go over to this collisions tab. And right here, this setting is where you want to be at. So the reason that the bullet solver is not it is not you know following the animation of this sphere is because the type here is set to create animated static objects. And in order for it to show up as having animation on it, it needs to be set to this create deforming static objects. It sees the object as a deforming object when it has animation. So when we click play you can see that it goes ahead and collides with our geometry, which is awesome, that's what we want. But what happens if we have multiple types of geometry in here? Maybe some of them we don't want to have any animation on. Maybe one object we wanna have some animation on. We wanna have one that maybe reacts with gravity. And then we want one that just kind of sits in our scene and interacts with our simulation, but it doesn't actually have any gravity affecting it or any animation going on. So we can get around that by doing some interesting stuff. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna get rid of that wire here. 
I'm also going to drop in a, another transform node, and I'm actually gonna make two of these, so I'll just copy and paste that in. So we'll go ahead here and set this to 0.3 again on the scale, wire in our object here. I'm gonna set this one to be just directly above our object. And then maybe this other one, and I actually made it attribute create, didn't realize that. Let's control C and control V. And maybe for this sphere, we want it to be behind our object here, but low enough that it's not going to be in the way of the sphere that we have flying across our scene. We're also gonna need a couple more of these RBD configures. So let's go ahead and paste these in. And I'll go ahead and wire them up respectively. So now if I drop in a merge and I go ahead and wire up all three of these. And if I put that into our collision, I select our bolt solver. If I click play, you're gonna see some weird stuff going on. So first of all, the first thing that happens is all of the balls teleport to the same location. Then they kind of start colliding with each other. And then this one acts super weird because it's got some animation on it and just starts kind of flying and spazzing out all over the place. Now, obviously that's not what we're looking for. We want these all to react differently. And the reason that they all teleport together is because if we go to geometry spreadsheet here and I click on our merge node, you can see they all have this name of piece zero. So they all have the same name. And so the solver sees them all as the same object, which obviously not, they're not the same object and we don't want them to react that way. So in order to get around that, we want to go to a object and we want to go ahead and we can do attribute uh, create. If I just drop that node in here and we're just gonna overwrite that attribute of our name. So you can see here, we're adding our attribute in. We'll just change the name to name. See, it gets rid of that, and now it's overwrote that, um, that attribute to a float. Now we don't want that, we want it to be a string, and we'll just keep the same naming conventions, and we'll do piece zero. And then I'm just gonna copy this and paste this two times into each tree. And then I'm gonna change this to piece one, and the third one I'll set to piece two. Now if I click back on this merge node, you can see that each one has a different name. So now if I go back to the scene view and I press play, you're gonna see that they all react differently. Now it's still got some weird stuff going on. And if we look back into the geometry spreadsheet, you're gonna see an explanation here. So if you remember right, when we enabled the objects as active, it makes it so the simulation sees them as having or needing to accept the um, the gravity of the scene. And so that's what's going on. If you see here, this attribute right here, it's set to active on every single one of these. And that's not what we want. So the way that we're gonna get around this is if we go to an attribute and we want to attribute addressed integer, and we don't dive into that, we wire that in, we can go ahead and keep this as point. And you see it's adding in this variant. So we don't want the variant attribute to be added. We wanna just set this to active. And then we wanna also overwrite this. So if we set this to set always, you'll see that this changes to zero. So now if I go back to the scene view and I just click on our bullet solver, press play, you can see that now it's reacting kinda of how we want. We have these two objects staying in the same spot. They're in our simulation, as you can see, the objects actually we're colliding with this sphere down here. And this one has the animation that we want. But we wanted this one to have some actual gravity affecting it. So in order to have that, we need this to have, if we go back to our attribute adjust, we need this one, this middle object to be active. So the way that we can do that is if we go to our groups here, if you try and click that, it's not gonna have anything show up. So we can just go ahead and type in the object number here. So we'll type in zero, comma, space, and then two. And if I hit enter, 
Now you're gonna see that zero and two are set to zero. And then our middle object, our middle sphere here, is set to active. And so if we go back into our scene here and I go ahead and click play, as long as I select the bullet solver, now we got what we want going on. That object has gravity, this has animation, and then this third sphere just interacts with our simulation. Pretty cool. So that's how you're gonna go about building your scenes. If you wanna have objects having gravity while others have animations, you're gonna to need to do a setup sort of similar to this. There might be a better way to do, do this, I don't know, um, but this is how I went about achieving it. What works, works, right? Any thing in Houdini, any thing that you wanna accomplish can be achieved a million different ways. This is just how I went about it, and it's not too difficult to set up. Now, obviously, if you have a lot of objects here, you're probably gonna do things a little bit differently, maybe create some group nodes and things like that in order to, um, to achieve what you want with less nodes and less wasted time. But for something simple like this, this will work. So hopefully this helped you out. Uh, not too difficult, but can be a little bit confusing and take some time to figure out, especially when you have multiple objects in your scene reacting with different types of forces or animations on them can uh, get a little confusing and doesn't really make sense until you start diving into things a little bit further. So like I said, hopefully this helped you out. If uh, you're still interested in RBDs and maybe you missed some, some of the more introductory stuff, I do have some videos going over all the different uh, maybe aspects of the, the RBD material fracture and the bullet solver. So check those out if you haven't already. I do have a lot of other videos about Houdini on my channel, as well as some on Cinema 4D as well, as well as a bunch more videos coming in the future. So make sure that you guys, you guys subscribe so that you don't miss any of those. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.